Today's video is brought to you by our friends over at Brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, learning doesn't have to be boring opening up a book and smashing your head against a wall. Sometimes it could be as simple as opening up the hundreds of lessons that Brilliant provides and going through things at your own pace. So you can learn complex things by breaking them down and figuring them out, whatever your learning level is. Whether you're absolutely new to a topic or you actually have some serious, masterful knowledge, there's always room to grow and room to learn. And they work with tons of intelligent people from around the world. Professionals from organizations such as the MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and plenty of other award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals have all gathered together to come up with crazy good lessons that have proven to be at least six times more effective than just watching videos on the internet anyways. And if you do it day by day like a habit, then you'll learn quicker than you could actually expect, ladies and gentlemen. But that being said, if you want to learn just like me and like plenty of other people that have taken Brilliant, then please go and try it free for a full 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash SOG or click in the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to give Brilliant a try, make sure to check out brilliant.org slash SOG. That said, let's get to the video. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and how's it going my fellow friends? It just keeps getting worse for our friends over at Apple. Now of course as you all know, Apple is getting pretty much sued. Uh, they're pretty much in the biggest antitrust lawsuit of our time right now, of your generation. Uh, actually because of their Apple products, their iPhone being as locked down as it ever was. Now obviously Apple's kind of responded a little bit and they've been kind of having to take some L's, but only as much as they've been legally required too. So just a little quick update on what kind of uh, L's that they've been taking and actually massive W's for you and I. One of them you may have heard of is that they've actually made it somehow easier to start repairing the actual phones that you buy, okay? Now I believe in things like right to repair. You know, if I buy a product, I should be able to, you know, fix it, to repair it, to own it. You know, it shouldn't be a thing where I buy something with planned obsolescence like it's the 50s and uh, we just somehow are okay with buying a product for a crap ton of money and then having it break down, slow down on us and not being able to fix things. Especially when fixing a lot of stuff in a phone is a lot easier than people give it credit for, okay? So according to Apple over here, they basically, uh, you know, taken away some of the issues with pairing. So what they talked about was the process of confirming whether or not a repair part is genuine or gathering information about the part, often referred to as pairing, is critical to preserving the privacy, security, and safety of the iPhone. Apple teams have been hard at work over the last two years to ensure the reuse of parts such as biometric sensors, you know, the things you use to unlock your devices with, your fingerprint sensors, you know, facial uh, recognition apparatus, all of that. Calibration for genuine parts new or used will happen on device after the part is installed. In addition, future iPhone releases will have support for used biometric sensors. And in order to simplify the repair process, customers and service providers will no longer need to provide a device's serial number when ordering parts from the self-service repair store for repairs not involving replacement of the logic board. And while, you know, you can read Apple's statement and probably be like, wow, that's really impressive of them. The reality is stuff like this should never be confusing or stuff like this should never be this complicated to repair. So again, Apple doing the bare minimum is still not good enough. And the thing is they're gonna stay at the bare minimum because the last thing this company ever wants to do is provide you with as much option and as much value as you could as you could get into. As long as you're in that ecosystem, as long as you're stuck, that's all that matters to them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you might have also heard, oh crap, is Apple letting emulators come into my gig to my phone? Now, if you all don't know, uh, Apple has to basically open up the ability for you to install multiple different app stores in Europe, other parts of the world where they're legally being forced to, by the way. It's not because they want to, they're legally forced to do so. They're forced to comply. So Apple has basically, I guess, loosened up their app store a little bit. And there was one actual thing from their developer page, which talked about 4.7 mini apps, mini games, streaming games, chatbots, and game emulators. Apple may offer certain software that is not embedded in the binary, specifically HTML5 mini apps, mini games, streaming games, chatbots, and plugins. Additionally, retro game console emulator apps can offer to download games. So immediately when people saw this, they were like, wait a minute, are we able to download GBA emulators, PS1 emulators? I think this has more to do with like big companies like Nintendo, like Sega, like Sony, releasing emulator applications underneath the iOS and letting you purchase emulated games 
from within those tools. I don't think this is necessarily Apple is allowing Game Boy Advance emulators, DS emulators, GameCube, PlayStation, Xbox emulators on the store. That would be a wild thing. And obviously they also mentioned retro game apps, so it's a little vague. What is retro and what isn't? Is there a certain year cutoff? What are we talking about over here? Now, obviously, uh, when it came to Apple, one of the things that got showcased and shared around was the fact that somebody submitted an actual emulator, the Delta Game Emulator, and apparently Apple accepted it. But they didn't accept it for the App Store. They actually accepted it for something known as the Alt Store. For those of you who don't know what the Alt Store is, it's basically a thing that allows Apple users to sideload applications to their iPhone, iPad devices. So if you wanna run emulators and you wanna just you know have access to them, you can make an Apple developer account, you can install this to a MacBook and effectively just install for a period of seven days at a time emulator access. Now obviously this is not ideal and if you want access to installing third-party applications and actually having control over your phone, then maybe it's time you just switch to Android. It's just better in that regard. Apple is doing the bare minimum it can to provide any support possible. But of course, why I really want to make this video is I woke up to something a little bit scary, ladies and gentlemen. You might have heard of this crazy headline, or maybe you even got an email sent to you, where Apple talked about threat notifications protecting against state-sponsored attacks. Now, I'm using the Wayback Machine to show it because they actually changed the state-sponsored attacks to something, I shit you not, known as mercenary spyware attacks. This is insane stuff to witness, but Apple's actually warning people that right now, there are some really scary people trying to get access to your Apple device. And uh, I'm here to talk about exactly why and how. So according to Apple, they're threat notifications and they're basically protecting against mercenary spyware. So to give you an idea what they talked about, this is a little scary. So on the actual Apple ID homepage, some of you, and make sure to check this if you're an Apple user, you may have got a threat notification somewhere around November 23rd, 2021, or maybe even recently about these mercenary spyware attacks. So according to Apple right here, what they said was because of who certain people are, and again, the amount of people that they're targeting, these mercenary groups, are people like journalists, high-ranking individuals, business owners, people that have power, right? And they own iPhones. And the thing is, if you get access to their personal devices, the amount of damage and information you can gather is very, very scary. So what they've effectively said here is according to public reports and research by tech firms, journalists, civil society organizations, they're basically saying that the mercenary group behind this is the NSO group, and they're using malware known as Pegasus. And while they're attacking very small amounts of individuals, people who are journalists, activists, politicians, diplomats, the damage can be in the millions of dollars. There's an extreme cost and there's an extreme scare for everyone when people like this get attacked. Now, obviously Apple provided, because of these groups, actual lockdown tools. So if you have an iPhone, for instance, you may have heard of something known as lockdown mode, which is an incredibly extreme protective mode under the iPhone system that basically locks down the device and turns it into almost a dumb phone in regards to certain fields. So for instance, if you're messaging people, attachment types, they're mostly blocked. If you're browsing, most complex technologies that make websites run better and operate more efficiently are basically blocked. FaceTime calls are blocked unless you previously called that specific person. And of course, Apple services, some of them are also blocked. Photos, they also have blocks as well. Device connections, wireless connectivity, and configuration profiles. So a lot of stuff is automatically locked off just to protect individuals. And this isn't just for politicians or like rich people that are targeted. If you ever feel that your phone is hacked and you run an iPhone, just enable lockdown mode. I actually had to walk another YouTuber through this because their phone was hacked. They were actually getting fucked and just putting them through this mode allowed them to at least circumvent actual attacks that were headed towards their device. It's crazy the world we live in. And this is where I'm gonna give Apple some credit here. They actually do provide a lot of tools to help keep your devices safe. And I think more companies should do this. And Apple's not doing this out of the kindness of their heart. Believe it or not, they are taking these people to fucking court. 
So for anybody that doesn't know, even back in 2021, Apple sued this NSO group because of these state-sponsored spyware attacks. They filed a lawsuit against them and they are actually contributing up to $10 million to cyber surveillance researchers and advocacy groups just to keep fighting against these goddamn scumbags. Now, obviously Apple's lawsuit, where I swear they use terms like amoral 21st century mercenaries who've created highly sophisticated cyber surveillance. The thing is for Apple, you know, suing these people, it's not necessarily just to, you know, be benevolent for you. Obviously, any company wants to protect its user base because having your name and cyber attack and leakage inside, you know, major mainstream news sources does not look good and does not inspire confidence. If you watched Apple's recent advertising, you'll notice that they've really pushed towards privacy and security. And if you buy an iPhone, utilizing their security parameters, your phone should be more safe and secure. And in ways, I would say Apple Apple's iOS to an extent is. So if you have a big company like NSO Group and a country going up against them and making a mockery of their security, it's ultimately bad for their brand. And obviously that's why Apple wants to stand up. And I think most companies should. The more these companies try to detach themselves from these corporate entities or these, I guess, quote unquote, amoral mercenaries. So at this point, it's time to ask, who the fuck is the NSO Group? What kind of dangerous group is this that exists? So the NSA group, also stands for Zniv, Shalev, and Omri, is actually an Israeli cyber intelligence firm that creates the Pegasus Group. So if you looked at this website and you might have recognized it before, this is the NSO group. It's basically a group that helps government agencies prevent and investigate terrorism and crime to save thousands of lives across the globe. Now, here's the thing about these organizations. They will always throw things like national security, the fear of terrorism, and all this stuff in order to make it so that they can justify their really invasive militant spyware to be spread around the world. And again, when you always bring this kind of shit in, this level of propaganda, it's not always that cut and dry. Now, while they say the world's most dangerous offenders communicate using technology designed to shield their communications while government intelligence and agencies struggle to collect evidence on their actions, we're here to bridge, bridge that field. And they basically say they help maintain things like public safety. And there's no doubt there's obviously like a fine line. Clearly there are bad people using iPhones, Androids, web services with highly encrypted formats for nefarious purposes. But usually when you get the government involved for public safety, oftentimes the liberties they take are way in excess of what they should be. Now, obviously, we know that bad people exist in the world, right? But just, uh, you know, if you ever looked into the history of government surveillance, you'd find that anytime acts like specifically, we'll get into one example, the USA Patriot Act or acts similar to, you'll find that honestly to protect the human pop the the, uh, the civilian population from, you know, acts of terrorism or dangerous, you know, uh, you know, people, right? Because evil people exist. They use the same uh, technology we do, right? They use the same encrypted formats we do to protect our privacy as they do, you know, with any device, even iPhones or Androids or any modern device. And obviously to expand the level of surveillance and using software that violates a lot of those laws or a lot of those, you know, search and seizure laws that we have that prevent the government from unnecessarily jumping into our devices. It's a very thin line you have to get, you know, uh, you know, comfortable with. And the thing is, it's never okay to overextend the ability to search your uh, devices and violate your privacy, even if it is to protect you from bad people. Because anytime you give the government an inch, they will often take a hundred miles. It's not even a mile, it is a hundred miles, all right? The amount of privacy that we have lost in the last 10, 20 years because of serious acts in the world is absolutely jaw dropping. And again, this is sort of a line in the sand we all have to draw to keep ourselves safe. And this is one thing where I can give Apple and I can give any company fighting against this stuff, uh, you know, my unanimous, you know, support and endorsement. And they're not just being sued by Apple, they're also being sued even very recently by Facebook or Meta, simply because they are accused for spying on WhatsApp users, okay? It's insane the amount of people they go after. And it's not just one or two, it's alleged to be 1400 people that this one company is spying on with their malware. So what they use is something known as Pegasus, right? And Pegasus is without a doubt, one of the most like, it's their secret sauce, the gold in this entire operation. 
And the reason why it's so sought after is because it's basically one of Israel's biggest bargaining chips in the world. It's one of Israel's biggest pieces of cyber warfare tools out there. So again, when you looked into it, when it was first caught and it was first being looked into by a Lookout, they were actually talking about what it basically took advantage of. So they said this spyware, this like mercenary spyware is apparently so sophisticated and so modular, it uses strong encryption to protect itself from traditional tools and a vigorous monitoring and of course, a self-destruct mechanism if detected. So they take advantage of three actual like CVEs. One of them is a memory corruption in WebKit. So if you own an iPhone, no matter what browser you download right now, you are on using a WebKit browser. So using a vulnerability, it allows an attacker to compromise a device when a user clicks on a link. So if they get sent a message, a link to a website, and they click on that with their messages, they open up a WebKit you know, page, and that immediately is where the strike occurs. So then they take advantage of a kernel information leak, a kernel base mapping vulnerability that leaks info to the attacker and allows them to calculate the kernel's location in memory. And then of course, once they get access there, they then jailbreak the device. And once they jailbreak your iPhone device, they install a whole bunch of tools and persistence to keep spying on you for the foreseeable future in a way that is so stealthy that it takes a lot to catch up to it. And this is where Apple thankfully has actually prevailed with their lockdown mode, like I mentioned earlier, against this actual organization. Because recently it was even found that they had a blast pass exploit that was actually circumvented thanks to what lockdown mode and the restrictions that it placed on the device. It's crazy that we have to look at actual private companies selling our products literally in live cyber warfare with an actual like full state sponsored surveillance agency. So they even talk about it right over here, the exact chain. So right over here, if you're a visual learner, for instance, this spyware can access your messages, calls, emails, logs, and everything from shit like Gmail, FaceTime, Facebook, Line, Mail.ru, Calendar, WeChat, SureSpot, Tango, WhatsApp, whatever. See, this group, this Israeli company is attacking not just the US, they attack Russia, India, China, every country imaginable. So right here, what happens is when you're a user and you get sent a message, you get sent a link, you click that link, they exploit against the browser, they hijack the device, they jailbreak, and then they install all of their stealthy persistent software and just start grabbing all of your communication data and start stealing it for them to use. It's truly a fucking disgusting situation. And the thing about it is, it's, it's something that has even been detected as far back as 2017 as well. This isn't new stuff. This is something that Apple, Android, uh, Google, basically Facebook, every company has to goddamn deal with this one cancerous organization, this mercenary group that basically gets to hide behind protection by the Israeli government. So for instance, back in 2017, Google detected something known as Chrysor, which is believed to be created by that NSO group. And of course, it's related to that Pegasus spyware, a, a believed to be by Google. So what they had effectively said was late last year, after receiving a list of suspicious packages from their friendly groups, they discovered a few dozen Android devices could have installed applications related to that Pegasus malware. Now, the beneficial part about this is it wasn't actually that widespread. It was actually, according to Google, only available on a very low volume of installations. Amongst 1.4 billion devices, they actually saw around three dozen installs on actual victim devices. And a grand majority of them were in Israel, Georgia, and then Mexico, and then it starts tapering off. But again, <laughs> the idea that this exists and Every company is constantly at vigilant cyber war with a lot of these surveillance agencies, NSO group in specific, is a bit concerning. Because here's the thing, even if the targets that they are attacking are big politicians or big individuals, it's by attacking them that they potentially could chain their attack into something more serious and possibly target a repository of information that may end up affecting you and I down the road. Look, at the end of the day, attacking the CEO of like Facebook or Google or Apple or you know anybody with government access to repositories ultimately puts a lot of that stuff at risk. So the way that it works is what it effectively happened is an attacker coaxed specifically targeted individuals, so those you know journalists, those big time diplomats, to download a piece of software to their device. And once it's installed, a remote operator is able to surveil the victim's activities on the device and within the vicinity, leveraging microphone, camera, data collection, and all the extra stuff they need. 
So again, how they did it in here was they actually convinced somebody to install or sideload an application to their device. And this is where, again, you have to remind people, if you don't trust somebody 100%, don't install the fucking app, okay? Simple as that. I don't install apps to any Android device unless I 100% trust that specific package. Just downloading it off the internet and installing it is a goddamn recipe for getting your information stolen and blown wide open. Now, Apple has basically alerted around 92 different countries, people in there, in 92 different nations right now, basically the entire fucking world, that uh, currently the amount of attacks that are coming from this mercenary group, the NSO group, is actually insane, and they should be pretty much watching out for it. So we're sitting in a situation where it gets, you know, pretty, pretty bad for Apple as the weeks go on. You know, they already got to abide and change a million chunks of their like walled garden ecosystem. They have to start offering proper right to repair or at least get on that track, even if they probably don't want to, because every government agency is on them. But even if the government agencies aren't on them, there are government agencies like the Israeli government that have a wing of their operation, believed to be the NSO group, effectively constantly pressuring Apple and making their devices look unsafe. Now, this is where, again, I'm going to give credit to Apple right now. I think it's totally awesome that they're going out of their way to provide protections for their devices. And I really think going forward, most of these big companies, Facebook, Google, Apple, probably should come together and try to provide extra security or at least work together in some consortium to provide even more security against this one scary Israeli operation. Because the NSO group, they are some really scary dudes. Now, even according to situations like this, all right, the NSO group, while they're designing to protect the world with their software, the problem is, according to certain agencies out there, the Washington Post, for instance, the spyware is classified as a military export by Israel and its sale is controlled by the government, which is scary. And the New York Times outright says, Israel's government has long seen that Pegasus as a critical tool for its foreign policy. This is literally a actual coded weapon to be used against other people, it seems. And it also doesn't help, too, that the United States, apparently, according to Haaretz, actually had used a literal, like, front organization to purchase a software known as Landmark, a geolocation system that reveals the exact location of a person by inputting their phone number directly from this NSO group. So we're at a point where these big companies have to fight basically the government. And in order to be, you know, the monopoly holders that they are, they also have to collude with the government, too. So it kind of puts me in a situation where I wonder where our privacy truly is. You can't trust the big companies. You can't trust the government. Honestly, at this point, you might as well just start building your security apparatus yourself. As long as it's self-contained and as long as it's owned by you, you can at least sleep peacefully knowing that you're not at the fucking mercy of a lot of these big organizations. So yeah, it's a wild, wild, wild few weeks for Apple. But I wanted to come into it because honestly, I've been watching their lawsuit go on and so forth. And to see that we are now calling things mercenary attack operations, I think I live in a wild world. I think I live in a scary situation, but it's good to talk about this stuff and to relay it and to educate people. So if you feel you've ever been hacked and you're on an iPhone, start bringing up that lockdown mode. If you're on Android, please stop downloading packages willy nilly because you know what? <laughs> you may end up being infected, maybe not by this, but by another piece of malware that maybe carries a similar type of infestation. But that said, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, yeah. Wild stuff. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.